In this video, we will discuss borehole data validation and error fixing. As the data directly underpins most models built in LeapFrog, ensuring you have clean, consistent data at the beginning of your modeling process will allow you to create accurate, meaningful models from the outset. Modeling with numerous errors throughout your data set can lead to headaches down the road, so it's best to resolve them at the start. In the previous video, we left off with the project into which I had just imported a set of boreholes. You'll notice that each of the borehole tables have a little red X on the table symbol. When boreholes are imported into LeapFrog, a number of common borehole errors are identified and flagged in the project. There are four classes of error which you can fix in LeapFrog. The first is to visually check the boreholes as this can often show obvious errors. This might include callers that have had values transposed or a decimal point placed in the wrong location, as we can see here. By importing and visualizing the data, you can easily find and replace these database errors. Second, tables marked with the red X contain errors that mean data cannot be used for processing. This category contains many possible errors which are listed with their resolution in the help. We can take a look at a few examples shortly. Third, numeric data columns marked with a red X indicate you need to review a couple of rules for the data. Lastly, tables marked with an orange exclamation point contain warnings, which indicates the data should be inspected to check for issues. Warnings may include callers with no values or duplicated boreholes. We can see a warning on the survey table, which we'll address shortly. If there are any errors in the borehole database, the erroneous data will be excluded from all models that are created from using that data. It is a good idea to fix the errors as soon as possible to make sure any models contain all the available data. An exclamation point, however, does not result in the exclusion of any data. There are two options for fixing errors and warnings in LeapFrog. The first option is to export the information about the errors from LeapFrog to a CSV file which allows the user to fix the errors in the original database. If possible, we highly recommend this option so that the errors don't persist in your database and propagate to other projects. You can either export the errors from all borehole tables at the same time by right-clicking boreholes and selecting export errors or you can export the errors from only one borehole table at a time by right-clicking that specific table. The errors will be exported to CSV files. Once fixed in the database, the boreholes can be reloaded into LeapFrog by simply clicking either boreholes or the affected table and then selecting reload. The second option, if it's not possible to fix the errors in the original data, is to fix the errors within LeapFrog. There are several different error types that LeapFrog flags. I'll go through each table in this project and discuss the errors. The first one we will address is the obvious error in the caller table. To fix this error, I can simply click on the hole in the scene and click Open Caller here. The affected role will be highlighted and I can make the required change. In this case, it's simply a decimal point out of place. I can change the value, save it, and the table will reprocess with the correct caller location. To look at the remaining errors, click the affected table and select Fix Errors. In the caller table, we can see there is one duplicate hole ID. As the entries are identical, I can simply tick the box to ignore one of them. I'll click Save to process the change. Next, we will take a look at the geology table. There are two different types of errors, caller max depth exceeded and overlapping segments. Caller max depth exceeded means that there is an interval in the geology table that goes deeper than the total depth indicated in the caller table. We can simply click Fix Max Depths to resolve this issue. Next, we can see that there is an overlapping segment in this hole. However, it is simply the result of transposed numbers. I will change this to 32.91 to be consistent with the rest of the logging. When the table is saved, the errors are removed, and I just have the remaining warning that there is no values for hole ID hole 015. 
Next, I will address invalid value handling on the numeric RQD table. There are no errors in this table, but we can see the rules that we need to review. The first rules specify how LeapFrog should deal with missing values and missing intervals, in addition to how it should treat non-numeric values, such as a less than sign, and any non-positive numeric values, such as a negative number or zero. The default action is to simply omit all of these instances. However, you can choose what you wish to do. In this case, I will choose to omit the missing intervals and missing values, so I'll leave those, but I'll click Add Rule to set a rule for the non-numeric values. In this case, I'll choose to replace values less than 45 with an RQD of 40. Once we're satisfied with these rules, tick These Rules Have Been Reviewed to clear the red X. These rules can be revisited and changed at any time if necessary, by simply double-clicking the appropriate column in the project tree. Lastly, we will address the warning on each table. This table shows the same warning as the geology table did, that there are no values for hole 015. We can check the warning on the survey table as well, and we can see that it's the same. If we would like to get rid of these warning exclamation points, we can actually ignore this hole from the table by double-clicking the caller table, searching for that hole, and clicking Ignore. Once I click Save, all the warnings will be removed as well. The borehole tables are now ready for the next step in the modeling process.